when God as man descended unto us to erase the stain of sin and put an end to wrath. The entire world thrills with hope on this night that gives it a savior. My people, kneel down and await your deliverance. For Christ has come, the Redeemer is here. May the ardent light of our faith guide us all to the cradle of the infant. As in ancient times a brilliant star guided kings from the east, the King of Kings was born in a humble manger. He has broken every bond. The earth is free and heaven is open. He sees a brother where there was only a slave. His love unites those that iron had chained. Who will tell him of our gratitude? For all of us, he is born. For all of us, he suffers and dies. And for all of us, he lives again. My people, stand up. Sing of your deliverance. Shout for joy and sing praise to the Redeemer. This holy night, this night divine, come and praise his name forever. His power and glory evermore proclaim.
Hey, welcome. I'm the Christmas search engine, and I can help you find anything related to DIY Christmas decorations. Oh, okay. Um, let's jump right in. Here we go. <laughs> what date Christmas this year? Uh, December 25th. What date Christmas next year? December 25th. Song that goes. Um, I think I know what you're looking for. How cook ham? Okay. How cook ham fast? Uh. Oh, ham flamethrower recipe. Wait, what? Christmas present, mom. Nice. Cheap. Nice. What day Christmas 2035? Are you serious? Is Santa Claus real? Uh, you should maybe ask your parents about that. Gift wrap bowling ball. Please be careful. Custom dog Christmas. Sorry, what? Christmas dog custom cute. Oh, you mean costume? Christmas dog costume cute! Gift wrap accordion. Uh, that's gonna be tricky. <laughs> Can I drink expired eggnog? No. What happens if drank expired eggnog? Why'd you even ask me in the first place? Dealing with relatives. Okay. Dealing with nosy relatives. Oh, uh, well. Dealing with my nosy, overbearing relatives who won't stay out of my business. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, it's pretty much all the same stuff. <laughs> Gift wrap a saddle. Who are you buying this stuff for? Santa Claus riding a unicorn. Santa Claus riding a unicorn socks. Is that a thing? Search it up. Oh wow, here they are. Take my money. Norwegian tree skirts. How many lights, one outlet? Elf pajamas. Dog singing Christmas carols. <sighs> oh, hello. What is Christmas really about? <laughs> I've got just the thing. An angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. So, Jesus? <laughs> Jesus. May I? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Huh. How fix burnt ham? Okay. Uh, you know what? Forget it. Pizza delivery Christmas Eve. <laughs> no problem. Biyaya ng Dios ay sumaating lahat. Welcome po sa ating uh, midweek celebration ng Christchurch Ortigas at uh, sa araw na ito ay uh, patuloy natin na uh, pag-aralan ang uh, aklat ng Revelation at ang um, aklat na ito ay uh, very challenging last week we've talked about a cut in the uh, what we call the main story at uh, sinabi natin ang patungkol sa mga nangyari na yung nangyaring labanan sa langit natalo si Satan di ba, sa Revelation chapter uh, 12. At that today, we will talk about Revelation chapter 13. Bear with me on this because I know na maraming mga katanungan dito. Maraming mga bagay na gusto natin lumalim. Maraming mga tao ay uh, parang, teka muna, hindi yan ang gusto namin marinig. Ang gusto namin marinig ay uh, <laughs> ano interpretation dito the truth is that there are a lot of interpretation with regards to this uh, chapter in the book of revelation at uh, pagka narinig mo yung mga bagay na, na nangyari dito makikita mo dito na ay familiar ito, teka muna oh, pastor pwede mo bang uh, palalimin pa, well kung gusto mo nang lumalim ay pwede naman tayo mag schedule ng at tinatawag na Bible study with regards to this. Kaya lang, again, since na ito ay midweek celebration, ito ay uh, magkoconcentrate tayo kung ano ang kailangan nating malaman at ano yung kailangan nating ihanda. So, uh, uh, without further ado, ay uh, ating po sisimulan ang Revelation chapter 13. Before that, tayo po ay manalangin. Dakilang Diyos na makapangyarihan sa lahat, kami ay lumalapit sa inyo muli, Panginoon, dahil alam namin na kayo, Panginoon, ang siyang may akda ng lahat ng mga bagay na pinag-uusapan namin. 
dakilang Diyos kami po, Panginoon, ay nagpapasalamat kayo paman dahil ipapamalas nyo sa amin ang mga bagay na ito at uh, kailangan naming malaman ito upang sa ganun malaman namin ang ginagawa mo at yung gagawin mo pa, Panginoon, upang sa ganun makapaghanda ang bawat isa sa amin sa darating na uh, mga, mga bagay, Panginoon, na ang hirap unawain, subalit, Panginoon, alam namin uh, ito ay mangyayari at alam namin na kami ay uh, magtatagumpay lamang sa pamamagitan niyo, O Jesus. Kami po, Panginoon, ay nagpapasalamat muli sa oras na ito. Kayo po ang may taas sa aming buhay at ito po ay aming samot na langin sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen and amen. So, in Revelation chapter 13, nagsimula siya doon sa um, nakatayong dragon, which is Satan. Siya ay nakatayo, ay stood on the shore of the sea. Yun ang una. Ngayon, merong lumabas doon sa tinatawag na sea. Ang lumabas ay isang beast. At ito, ang beast na ito, meron siyang... Um, sampung sungay <laughs> at pitong ano, ulo. Hindi ko alam oh, paano mo i-describe to na merong tinatawag na sampung korona doon sa bawat uh, uh, sungay na meron siya. And on its head, sabi doon, a blasphemous name. The beast I saw resembled a leopard um, but had feet like those of, of a bear and a mouth like a lion. Uh, the dragon gave the beast his power and his throne and great authority. One of the, the heads and the, of heads of the beast seemed to have had a fatal wound, but the fatal wound had been healed. The whole world was filled with wonder and followed the beast. People worshipped the dragon because he had given authority to the beast, and they also worshipped the beast and asked, who is like the beast who can wage war against it? The beast was given a mouth to utter proud words and blasphemies and to exercise its authority for 42 months. It opened its mouth to blaspheme God and to slander his name and his dwelling place and those who live in heaven. It was given power to wage war against God's holy people and to conquer them and was given authority over every tribe people language and nation all inhabitants of the earth will worship the beast all those all whose names have not been written in the lamb of lamb's book of life the lamb who was slain from the creation of the world whoever has ears let him let them hear if anyone is to go into captivity, into captivity they will go. If anyone is to be killed with a sword, with a sword they will be killed. This calls for patient endurance and faithfulness on the part of God's people. Yung pangalawa from verse 11 to verse 18 mamaya uh, tutuloy natin. Pero gusto ko munang uh, uh, bigyan ng introduction itong una. Ang una, sinasabi dito, ay merong tinatawang na beast. At yung beast na yun lumabas sa tubig, sa, sa sea. At uh, alam natin na kapag ka pinag-usapan padating dito ay siya figured. Ito ay figurative. At um, base sa lahat ng pag-aaral ng mga ng mga experts, mga Bible scholars with regards to this, it talks about uh, um, an authority, a political authority, di ba? <laughs> na kung saan ay uh, um, ang mga tao ay magbabow down sa political authority na yon. Now, this is the rise of the Antichrist, di ba? Yung, yung ayaw sa, sa Panginoon. Although yung an word na Antichrist ay um, nasa 1st and 2nd John, Wala dit, walang mention na pangalan na Antichrist o word na Antichrist sa Revelation pero gagamitin natin yung word na yon dahil ito ay kasangkapan ni Satan, ni Satan upang sa ganon linlangin ang mga tao ang mga tao ay takutin upang sa ganon ang mga tao ay magpuri doon sa kay Satanas so, 
Ito yung mga ito yung mga bagay na mangyayari. Ginagawa ito ng mangyayari ito dahil or pinablish ito upang sa ganon malaman ng tao kung ano ang ginagawa ng Panginoon at ano ang mangyayari, di ba? Upang sa ganon ang bawat isa sa atin ay makapaghanda. At dahil dito, titingnan natin, is it uh, what we call valid or um ito ba ay ay uh, pwede nating pagkatiwalaan ang mga nakasulat ba dito ay pwede nating pagkatiwalaan the answer is yes because it's also connected to what we call the previous prophecies ano yung mga previous prophecies yon ang previous prophecies na makikita natin doon sa book of Daniel, doon sa sa mga mga prophetic books na yon, doon sa sa dream ni Daniel na kung saan pinakita rin doon yung tinatawag na horns, di ba? At uh, pinapakita rin doon yung mga beast. At uh, uh, symbolically, makikita natin doon na ang kanyang presentation dito ay merong kaugnayan doon sa mga nakasulat na yon. Subalit, ito ang ano, ito ang problem. Kapag katinalakay natin ang lahat ng mga connection ng mga ito, the again, hindi tayo matatapos dahil napakaraming mga connection nito na kinikilangan nating puntahan. Kasama na diyan yung uh, dream ni Nebuchadnezzar, kasama na diyan yung tinatawag na horn among the ten na makikita natin yan na it's a symbolic uh, event doon sa Daniel chapter 7 so um, doon sa sa passage na yon ay uh, naka si Daniel ng uh, uh, dream at na doon ay uh, uh, nakita niya yung tinatawag na na uh, beast na lumabas doon sa tinatawag na tubig sa sea at it is a symbolic uh, um, of the sea of people yung tinatawag na sea hindi naman talaga tubig kung kung tutuusin kasi kung uh, titingnan natin ay uh, uh, iba yung 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 interpretation ng bawat isa ngayon since na ito ay tinitingnan natin sa paraan na kung saan maintindihan natin ay um, dapat ay uh, makita rin natin na ang Panginoon ay gumagawa ng mga bagay upang sa ganon makita ang, uh, ang uh, uh, mga pangyayaring ito at uh, natapos na. At yung pangyayaring ito ay uh, masasabi natin tayo ang Panginoon ang nagwagi dito. So, um, uh, let's continue on. Uh, makikita natin the ten horns are... Um, Siguro masasabi natin ito ay sampung hari di ba? ng kingdom ng ni Satanas. At uh, maraming pwedeng mangyari, maraming pwede nating isa-associate dito. At uh, alam ko na maraming mga uh, uh, preacher na nagsabi na rin patungkol dito. At uh, siguro yung mga Christian na uh, uh, groups ay may kanya-kanyang interpretation patungkol dito. Kaya let's move on. Tingnan natin yung second part. Yung second part, it talks about the second beast. Sabi ni, ni, ni John, Then I saw a second beast coming out of the earth and had two horns like a lamb, but it spoke like a dragon. It exercised all the authority of the first beast on its behalf and made the earth and its inhabitants worship the first beast whose fatal wound had been healed. And it performed great signs, even causing fire to come down from heaven to the earth in full view of the people because of the signs it was given power to perform on behalf of the first beast it deceives the inhabitants of the earth it ordered them to set up an image in honor of the beast who was wounded by the sword and yet live the second beast was given power to give breath to the image of the first beast beast so that the image could speak and cause all who refused to worship the image to be killed it also forced all people great and small rich and poor free and slave to receive a mark on their right hands who huh, sounds familiar and on their foreheads so that they could not buy or sell unless they had that mark which 
is the name of the beast or the number of its name. This calls for wisdom. Let the, peep, the person who has insight calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. That number is 666. So itong second beast na lumabas sa earth, yeah, uh, masasabi natin na ito ay pangalawa na kung saan ay ayaw kay Kristo. At um, ginawa niyang sensationalize niya yung, ano, yung nangyari doon sa first beast. Ito ay nagkaroon ng fatal wound pero dahil uh, uh, siya ay pinagaling, naggumaling. At ito ay ginamit niya. Ginamit niyang signs na kung saan um, uh, gina, ginawang power, given power, di ba? On behalf of the first beast. So, kung dinisim niya yung earth, yung mga tao, at uh, uh, nag-set up siya ng image in honor of the first beast na, na ang, ang nagsasabi dito ay kinikailangan i- 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 purihin itong, itong first beast. Now, lahat ng tao ngayon may problema kasi ang nangyayari ay uh, hindi ka makakabili unless wala kang uh, tatak at yung tatak na yun nasa right hand at sa foreheads. Hindi ko alam kung paano yung mangyayari na yun, pero meron na ngayong tinatawag na uh, RFID. Diba? Pagka pumupunta ka ng NLEX at SLEX, yung mga toll gates natin ay may mga RFID. Siguro marahil ito ay ginagamit na upang sa ganon ay ang mga mga tao ngayon ay uh, uh, maghanda at anong yayari na nga ito. So, the beast of the book of Revelation, ha? in this passage again, we see ten nation. Ha? Makikita natin according doon sa Daniel, makikita rin natin dito sa Revelation ay halos pareho. Ha? Now, the, an- the Antichrist ay uh, makikita natin dito yung ayaw kay Kristo. Ay, at ito ay uh, nagbibigay ng uh, empowerment at uh, inspired by Satan himself, the dragon. One of the head of the beast ay uh, merong fatal blow. So, balit ito ay uh, hindi natin alam ito, pero uh, it, it, it healed it, ito ay ay um, nagkaroon ng kagalingan which is actually makikita mo kapag ka, ang human nature pagka nakita mong merong gumaling ay it's a miracle at uh, ang mga tao ay uh, uh, pupunta mak- aayon doon so ha teka muna <laughs> medyo palalim ng palalim na tong pinag-uusapan natin hindi makakabili ang mga tao kung wala yung mark and um, uh, yung situation ngayon gaya nga na sinabi ko meron na yung radio frequency identification so in um, siguro mangyayari ito dahil dahil ang technology ngayon grabe na di ba actually meron pang mga uh, mga agam-agam lalong-lalo na nagkaroon na ng tinatawag na vaccine ang uh, tinatawag na COVID-19 at ito raw ang simula well, uh, hindi ko naman nakikita yun ang simula, so balita uh, um, masasabi natin na marami ng mga bagay patungkol dito, mga pag-aaral patungkol dito na pwedeng mangyari at ito ay gagawin ng sanlibutan upang sa ganun makontrol nila ang tao dito so napaka, napakaliwanag at uh, again, hindi tayo magdedwell masyado. Sabi ko nga kanina, kung gusto natin na i-dwell ng gusto ito, ay kinikilangan natin ng mahaba-habang oras patungkol dito. Ang tanong, ano yung gusto nating dapat makita dito? Babalik tayo doon sa sinabi ko kanina. Ay, um, ito ay, ay pinapakita ng Panginoon upang malaman natin kung, an, kung ano yung ginagawa niya at kung ano yung mangyayari at yung kanyang gagawin. And so, dapat naghahanda tayo. At mapansin ninyo, doon sa 18 uh, verses na binigay sa atin ng, ng chapter 13, makikita natin merong nakasingit na dalawa. Di ba? Dalawang bagay dalawang uh, pa- paalala di ba dito 
At ang una na nakalagay doon sa verse 10 at ang pangalawa nandito dito sa verse 18. So doon tayo magbibigay ng importansya. Dito natin ifo-focus ang ating pag-uusapan sa araw na ito. Hindi kung doon sa mga koneksyon ng uh, tinatawag na Antichrist. Yes, mangyayari ito. Ha? There's no doubt about it. These things will happen. Because it is written. However, what we want to, to know and what we want to do is to be in line with God with regards to the things that, that the church can do uh, while we are waiting for these um, things to happen. Ano yun? Verse 10 Bago sinabi na, if anyone is to go into captivity, into captivity they will go. If anyone is to be killed with the sword, with the sword they will be killed. Then, ang sabi doon, this calls for patient endurance and faithfulness on the part of God's people. Ano raw ang gagawin natin? Kinikailangan, ito ay tawag. Ha? Pag sinabi yung tawag, ito ay dapat natin seryosohin. Amen ba doon? Dahil lahat ng tawag ng Panginoon ay seryoso. Sabi niya sa Matthew 4, verse 19, Come, follow me. Yun ang tawag. Ha? Follow me. Ang tanong, ay ikaw ba ay umaayon doon sa tawag na yun? Dahil may tawag dito. If, you, if God, if Jesus Christ says, follow me, dapat tayo ay sumusunod kay Kristo. <laughs> at, at yung tawag na yun ay may kaakibat na gawain. At yung gagawin ni Lord, ang, ano yung gagawin ni Lord? I will make you. Yeah? I will make you. Yun ang gagawin ni Lord. Siya ang gagawa. Di ba? Ibig sabihin, merong pagbabago sa buhay ng bawat mananampalataya, mga tao na sumusunod sa Panginoon, mga taong tinatawag ang sarili nilang Kristiyano, meron dapat pagbabago. At kung walang pagbabago, merong question mark doon sa pagsunod natin kay Kristo. I will make you. Magagawin ng Panginoon, binabago ng Panginoon ang tao. Yun ang call. At ang dapat ginagawa natin, fishers of men. Tayo ay dapat nasa mission ng Panginoon. Kaya nga hindi ito na iiba dito sa tawag na ito. Sabi, this calls. Ah, ito ay tawag. Merong tawag. Tinatawag tayo. Ah, mga mananampalataya, mga kristyano, mga alagad ni Kristo tayo ay tinatawag tinatawag tayo na ano na para saan patient endurance and faithfulness patient endurance and faithfulness marahil tagtatanong kayo ano ba yung patient endurance na to at ano ba itong faithfulness na ito di ba of course alam natin marami tayong alam pagdating sa patient endurance and faithfulness pero alam ba talaga natin yun ang tanong do we have that realization uh, about what we call patient endurance so the first thing is patient ang patient ay ang synonymous nitong patient na to is what we call long suffering <laughs> yun ang una Teka muna, Pastor, mukhang mabigat ka agad yung umpisa. Yeah, yun, mabigat naman talaga ang tawag ng Panginoon. When we talk about patient, we are, talk about, we are talking about long-suffering. At yung long-suffering na yan, long. <laughs> Sabi, love is patient. Ha? Kung ikaw ay may, may asawa, alam mo ang ibig kong sabihin. Ha? Ang long-suffering. We are called to suffer. If you are a Christian, if you are a disciple of Jesus Christ, Jesus said, those who want to follow me must deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. He was talking about, of course, sacrifice. 
a life of sacrifice a life of sacrifice <laughs> yun ang totoo etong etong call na ito is a call for sacrifice is a call for uh, uh, what we call uh, long suffering suffering it's a call for suffering that's the truth Anong ibig natin sabihin? Ang ibig natin sabihin, hindi totoo na uh, tayo ay tinatawag upang mabuhay ng, ng maalwan, ng masaya, ng mga, ng mga bagay na pinipreach nowadays upang sa ganun, feeling good yung mga tao. Maraming mga tao ayaw pakinggan yung, yung preaching na tulad na pinipreach natin ngayon. Subalit, ito ay preaching na kung saan galing sa Bible. Sabi nga ni Jesus, ha? Ah, you must deny yourself and take up your cross. Sabe is that endure. Patient. Patiently endure. Uh, hindi ko alam kung bakit dinalawa yung, yung word na yun kasi halos pareho lang yun. If you endure, you have that patient to endure. Ibig sabihin, mahaba ito. Mahabang proseso to. Hindi lang yung endurance in terms of physical ito ay endurance instead in terms of uh, the wholeness emotional yeah? kasi nakikita mo yung mga mahal mo sa buhay nagsasuffer kasama mo meron ding itong tinatawang na na mental uh, torture kasi yung takot na meron di ba ano ba meron din itong spiritual kasi ayaw ng kaaway na ikaw ay magpuri sa Panginoon and so, ang sabi, patiently endure. You, you need to understand that word. Dapat malaman mo yung word na yon, na yung word na yon ay kaakibat nito yung word na tinatawang na suffering. Di ba? Yun ang pagkatawag sa mga taong nananampalataya sa Panginoon. We endure. Alam mo, nakakalungkot. Pinag-usapan din naman natin kanina yung tinatawang na vaccination. Maraming mga pastors sa um, hindi lang dito sa Pilipinas, sa buong mundo ay um, uh, halos takutin ang mga tao with regards to what we call vaccination. Eh wala namang uh, matibay na ebidensya na yun talaga yung ibig niyang sabihin na ito ay merong RFID at ikaw na ay mawawala ka sa listahan ng ng Panginoon etc etc pero sinabi ng Panginoon Jesus we are like sheep ready to be slaughtered <laughs> Ang sabi rin ay kinikilangan natin sumunod sa governing authorities kapag ka ang pinapahayag ng governing authorities ay yung mga pawang mabubuting bagay at ang sabi ni Pablo sabi niya ito ay para sa iba sa kapwa mo yun ang katotohanan so dala ng katakot na matay ay uh, kung ano-ano mga pinapahayag patungkol sa mga tinatawag na alam mo na itong, itong um, uh, vaccination na to so that's the first thing patient endurance the second thing is faithfulness faithfulness Ang mga kristyano, ang mga alagad ni Kristo ay hindi dapat bumibitiw kahit ano pa yung pinagdadaanan niya. Di ba? Ang pastor na to ay maraming beses nang gusto bumitaw. Hindi sa pananampalataya, kundi sa ministry. Pero sa kabila ng mga bagay, dinadala pa rin ako ng Panginoon kung nasaan ako ngayon. Tandaan natin, uh, ang present condition natin uh, ay binigyan tayo ng Panginoon ng ways upang sa ganun mapaghigitan natin ang ating kondisyon. Tandaan natin, merong uh, buhay na walang hanggan at si Jesus ay babalik muli. Babalik siya dito sa sanlibutan. So, we must be faithful. Faithful. 
doon sa ginagawa natin. Ha? We we must trust the Lord. When we talk about faith, we are trusting we we, we are talking about believing and trusting God no matter what. Therefore, if we talk about faith, there is this what we call believe that is ascend. Alam mo, ha? at yung tinatawang na trust, ikaw ay pinapakubaya mo. Yun ang faith. So, the first thing that we understand, patient endurance. Pangalawa, faithfulness. Ano man ang mangyayari sa mundo, be patient. Endure and be faithful. And in verse 18, nakakatuwa talaga. Kasi maraming mga pinahayag dito at ang sinabi dito, another call, pagtawag. Uh, again, tinatawag tayo dahil mayroong pangalawang beast. Yung pangalawang beast na to, gagawin niya ang lahat upang hindi ka makakain. Gagawin niya lahat upang sa ganun, pahirapan ka ng gusto. Ang pangalawang ano, call, ang sinasabi sa verse 18, this calls for wisdom. Wow! Wisdom. <laughs> Yun ang totoo nun. Sabi sa, sa James, if any one of you lack wisdom, ask the Lord for wisdom. Kinakailangan natin merong tinatawang na sapat na understanding doon sa knowledge na meron tayo. At doon, pairalin natin kung ano ang nakasulat doon sa aklat ng Biblia. Upang sa ganun, magkaroon tayo ng tinatawag na wisdom. Ang wisdom ay nanggagaling sa Panginoon. Meron kang alam doon sa nakasulat at ang banal na espiritu ang siyang naglilid sa iyo for wisdom. Di ba? Dapat makita ng bawat mananampalataya ito upang sa ganon ang bawat isa sa atin ay maging panatag sa kanyang pananampalataya sa Panginoon. Calls for wisdom. Again, be patient. Endure. Be faithful. And have the wisdom of God. Itong mga bagay na ito ay pinapaalala sa atin sa, ng Panginoon upang sa ganun hindi tayo matakot sa anumang mangyayari sa buhay natin. Ano man ang mangyari, ang Panginoong Jesus ang siyang may control. Ang Diyos ang may control ng lahat. Kaya hindi ka dapat mapangwalang um, uh, o mapanghinaan ng loob, kapatid. The Lord is with you no matter what. That's why you need to heed to that call of God. Not to, not to your, your emotion. Uh, your negative emotion, even positive emotion. No! You just do it because the Holy Spirit is in you and that is why it calls for discernment. Diba? Wisdom. It calls for wisdom for each and every one. Again, the Lord is upon us. Etong chapter 13, mabigat ito dahil uh, kung titignan ng mga taong wala kay Kristo, nakakatakot po ito. Kaya nga, it's a warning para doon sa mga taong wala kay Kristo. Ano ang humahad lang sa inyo upang tanggapin siya bilang inyong Panginoon at tagapangligtas. At para doon sa mga mananampalataya, kayo ay pinagpala you need to be strong in your in your faith be patient endure all things and have the discerning spirit because the holy spirit is upon you god bless you
welcome to our service. If you're new here, you may be wondering who we are and what this church is all about. Well, the heart of the matter is this. We're a group of people doing our best to love God and love those around us. One of the ways we express this love is through worship, because our God is truly amazing. He created everything, great and small, and His love for us is incredible, powerful, and completely unconditional. We also spend time looking into His Word, the Bible, and receive practical teaching to guide us along His path in our everyday lives. But it doesn't end when the service is over. Throughout the week, we gather in groups to serve, pray, reach out to our community, and sometimes just to hang out and have fun. Life is full of challenges, and none of us are perfect. But we believe that's one of the reasons God has brought us together. We're all here to help and support each other through each step of life's journey, because nobody should have to travel alone. So thanks for joining us today. No matter who you are, we want you to know you are welcome. I am aware that there are people watching this stream right now that may not know Jesus personally as their Lord and Savior. The whole reason why CCO did this live stream is that we want to give you an opportunity to come to know Jesus Christ as personal Lord and Savior. You know, you may never heard anybody talk about Jesus the way before, right? Like, He is my King, He is my friend, I have relationship with Him. When the Bible says, if you confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. Saved from what? Saved from internal separation from God. Today, you can be reconciled to Him and get right with God. You may not know Him, maybe once you did, but you right now, you're not walking with Him. Well, today, today is your day. It's time to come home. I want to encourage you that this is your moment right now. If you don't know Jesus or not sure where to stand, I want you to say yes to Jesus right now in the chat box. And in faith, you will begin relationship with God today. What we want to do with you is we want to pray. We want you to invite Jesus in our heart, making Him the Lord and Savior. So I want you just to pray this prayer and repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I believe Jesus is your son and he died on the cross to take away my sin. So I ask you to forgive me all of my sin. I believe that Jesus rose from good to give me eternal life. Today, I step into a right relationship with you with my faith in Jesus and his completed work on the cross. I am now your child. So I ask you, Lord Jesus, to come into my heart, come to my life, and become my Lord, my Savior, my best name, I pray, Amen.